AI, this is something you've always, we think of AI, especially the younger folks, I think is uh, something new, as machine learning, as something Google and Microsoft and Apple are investing in, but this has been around for ages. That's true. Uh, the field really got its start in 1956 at a conference at Dartmouth University, which is uh, where the name artificial intelligence actually came from. It was, uh, I think, a workshop uh, for the study of uh, artificial intelligence title was something like that. And many of the famous names that if you're of a certain age, you would <laughs> know, uh, like John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky, uh, and a couple of other uh, very famous people, Claude Shannon, who people may know from historical work on uh, information theory. Uh, they all got together at Dartmouth uh, for summer and decided they were going to look into how to make machines, how to program machines to engage in behavior that normally require human effort or attention. Yeah. Or attention. Yeah. Of course, Minsky just recently passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. McCarthy, the founder of Creative Lisp. Uh, Correct. The language of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. there, artificial intelligence was the hot thing for a while. Um, I didn't realize it went back to 56, but... Uh, yes, it does. It's as old as I am. Uh, but uh, it went through a, a fallow period. We gave up, didn't we, on AI for some time? Well, the field has always motored along, but the public uh, awareness or image of the field has changed over time. And so it's gone through a series of cycles of being very much in vogue and then out of vogue and then in vogue again. And uh, the reasons for that are quite interesting and not necessarily very uh, flattering for what goes on in the field or for the way these things are perceived by the public. Right now we're in another one of these uh, hype cycles and uh, it's it's got some justification behind it. There's tremendous amount of good work going on, mainly because of the area of machine learning. And what people today uh, who are entering the field, what they think of as artificial intelligence is actually quite different than what people originally intended or thought the field was going to be about back in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. So, in fact, I, Wired Magazine just had an interview, uh, Joe Ito of uh, MIT Media Lab, with uh, President Obama, and I thought he made a very, uh, actually a very good point. The president, of all people, right at the top, distinct, distinguishing specialized artificial intelligence with general AI. And Absolutely. He, and he said, we've, you know, we all read science fiction and really are thinking of AI as this kind of general HAL 9000 device that we can converse with, play chess with, well, you know, be like a human, uh, and that's quite a way off. Is that is that accurate? Is that is that something that is probably not that we shouldn't be thinking of when we think of AI? Yeah, I, I'd like to distinguish two things, and the book kind of debunks a lot of the mythology about artificial intelligence, precisely because of the point that that you're making. There is no artificial general intelligence. This is merely an aspiration or an idea that you see in the movies and in the press. Uh, the rest of it is not really that way. The actual work that's going on is that we're applying some new software, software engineering techniques to uh, problems that are usually fairly specific or certain tasks. Now, the interesting thing about that is whenever we have a new task that we're able to solve, most recently, for example, playing the game of Go by a computer. Um, what happens is people overinterpret that. They think, oh my God, the machines are getting smarter and smarter. But a sober view, if you really look at the technologies, that's not actually the case. The machines are not getting smarter. What it means is that we've done a great job of engineering uh, out of a tool bag of uh, techniques to, we've been able to apply them to solve some particular problem, in this case, playing a game of Go. Now, the problem is that people overinterpret that. This is what I call AI theater, and this has been going on since the 1950s and 60s, where you get these kind of magic shows, where there's usually some kind of little trick that fools people into overinterpreting what it is that they're seeing. And so people think, oh my God, the Terminator's coming, or we're developing machines that are generally intelligent, and what are we going to do when they decide they don't need us anymore? Yeah. Well, I don't worry about my toaster not needing me anymore, and I don't worry about 
the systems that we're building with artificial intelligence not needing me anymore. This is not to say that there isn't progress taking place in the field. Yeah. There is progress, but it's, it's uh, in my view, the wrong way to think about the field that what we're doing is we're building increasingly intelligent machines. That just doesn't match what we're really seeing. What's happening is we're expanding the class of problems to which we can apply this new technology.